Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about writing the definition essay. Um, now, this is one of those projects that English teachers have kind of invented. And for the most part, nobody really does a definition essay as such in the wild, as it were. There are sometimes definition essays that people write for very specific purposes. Um, particularly things like encyclopedia entries and, and things like that, similar, similar things like that. But for the most part, definition work is done often as part of a larger argument or part of a larger project. Um, but the way that you approach a definition essay, again, this is a skill that you may incorporate into other writing that you do. So, Let's imagine your instructor has given you the assignment to write a three to four page definition essay. You choose, arbitrarily, the word tomato. What's the first thing that you do? Well, chances are, if you're a typical student, you go to Merriam-Webster's dictionary and look up the word tomato. On the page, you write, Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines tomato as the unusually large, or the usually large, rounded, edible, pulpy berry of an herb genus Solanum of the nightshade family, native to South America, that is typically red but maybe yellow, orange, green, or purplish in color, and is eaten raw or cooked as a vegetable, or a plant that produces tomatoes. Great, you've defined it. The problem is. If this is a three to four page essay assignment, you've still got about three to four pages to actually write. So what are you going to say? Well, this is where you've run into a problem with your definition essay. Um, so I had a, I had a friend, uh, I have a friend, he's still my friend, uh, who at a conference once made the argument that the only two dictionaries scholars should ever look in uh, the Oxford English Dictionary, which will tell you the history of how a word has been used over time, and UrbanDictionary.com, which will tell you what people use the word to mean today. I really like that story, I really like that idea, but generally speaking, dictionary definitions are not the right way to go for a definition essay, because they tend to be quite limited. So, how do you approach a definition essay in a way that's actually going to work, that's going to, to give you some meat to work with in this paper. Well, the first thing is you want to make sure you choose a good word. So a word like tomato is not especially good because it's a concrete thing. Yes, there's an old timey definition where tomato was a slang term for an attractive woman and you could put that in there, but that's still at best half a page. And there's not much more to go with there. So you want to choose a word that preferably is abstract. So something like freedom, justice, uh, self-care, anything that conveys an idea rather than something that's si simple and concrete. If you give us something that's concrete, it tends to be very hard to, to shape a useful definition essay, because you have to make an argument about what this word means. So if you choose something like adulthood or maturity, if, you, if we take adulthood as a synonym for maturity, um, this is something that people can radically disagree about what exactly this word means. And so you can come in and make an argument because ultimately that's what a definition essay has to do is make an argument about what adulthood means in your definition. What are the characteristics that define this? So this is one of the things you wanna start with. You wanna choose a good word, a word that people can disagree about the meaning of. You also want to be aware that when we talk about definitions, there's two major species of definition. There's the denotative definition and the connotative definition. So denotative refers basically to the dictionary definition. So 
the dictionary says that adulthood means X, whatever the definition of adulthood in Merriam-Webster's dictionary is, that's the denotative definition. And actually, you can incorporate that into your essay if what you're going to do is push back against it using a connotative definition. So connotative definition means the set of associations or ideas or even the emotional connections linked to a particular word or concept. So freedom, for instance, in the United States, freedom has a massive amount of connotation. A, a denotative definition might be something like the condition of not being constrained, ex, of not being externally constrained or something like this. But the connotative definition may be much, much different. Freedom may mean, for some people, freedom may mean Freedom from government oversight, the ability to do what you as an individual want without responsibility to others. For others, freedom may mean um, the freedom from oppression, the freedom, the freedom to be protected, to, to be secure. Still, for others, freedom may center around the idea that um, I can't be coerced or I, I, I don't I don't suffer from need. That is, um, I am secure in my life. I don't need to, for instance, get a job if I don't want to, and then and I don't risk starving to death or being homeless or something like this. Freedom from want, freedom from tyranny, freedom to do what I want, freedom not to pay taxes. These are all potential definitions of freedom. And so because this is an abstract concept and because it has a lot of potential connotations, a lot of potential individual meanings, you can make an argument about what freedom means. You can define this term in a way that um, will particularly set you up to make a debatable argument. Because remember, that's one of the fundamental things about rhetoric, about making an argument is if someone can't reasonably disagree with the claim that you're making, then you're not really making an argument. So this is one of the central things that you want to think about when you're choosing your word to define. Can somebody posit a different meaning to this? That's not necessarily crucial for something like Merriam-Webster's. Like if they're, if they're saying, we just need a working definition of freedom, but we're not necessarily making an argument. They're in a different position than you are when you're doing a definition essay. You are making an argument. And so somebody has to be able to reasonably disagree and posit a different definition. So that's really, really important. And again, you want to think about the different potential connotations, because that's going to help you build your idea of what this word actually means. Um, the other thing that you want to be, to potentially be thinking about, and this is actually good practice for what you might be more likely to encounter in a real world writing scenario, is are there technical definitions of this word that might differ from the general definition? Do specialists in a particular discipline use this word to mean something different than what lay people use. So a really good example, one that's that's been very, very important over the past few years because it's come up over and over and over again, particularly with vaccine skepticism or hesitancy, is theory, right? Generally, when we use the word theory, we mean a guess. I have a theory about why my car is making that weird noise, something like this. It means I have a guess. I don't know. I don't have necessarily that much data, but I can make a guess. I'm not necessarily right. In science, in the hard sciences especially, a theory is the best explanation for the available data. So theory here means not decidedly not just taking a random guess. Theory here means 
based on all of the information that's available, this explanation fits most. This is the best explanation for this phenomenon. Theories can, in principle, be proven wrong. New information is discovered, etc., etc. But that doesn't mean that this is just a random guess. It doesn't mean this is an individual scientist's preference or something like this. This means this is the best explanation. So that's two very different meanings of the word. And you can make an you can you can create a very strong definition essay in which you say while there is this general definition in this specific context this is what this term means this is something we do all the time as scholars um, we slight may slightly shift the meaning of words we may um, invent new terms even some people like Jacques Derrida loved inventing new terms to express concepts um, and so if you're if you're working with a word in a technical sense rather than the general sense that most uh, most lay readers would be likely to encounter that word that's another good way to make a really strong definition essay and you want to again support all of these arguments whether it's a connotative approach, whether it's defining an abstraction, whether it's here's a technical meaning for this term, whatever it is, you want to support your arguments with whatever kind of evidence is appropriate. But basically, these are the these are the major strategies you want to use to define the term.